And now the interview you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Gas giant Enbridge announcing that it will be buying three utilities from Dominion Energy and a $9.4 billion acquisition, making it the largest natural gas provider in North America. And joining us right now with the details of that deal is Greg Ebel. He is the president and CEO of Enbridge. And Greg, welcome. Thanks, Becky. Great to be here. It's Very great exciting. to see you. Uh, so there's been so much uh, kind of thought around what's happening with natural gas. A lot of regulators getting involved, people trying to push bans on this. Um, that is what you looked out and Dominion saw and thought, okay, we're going to see about selling some of these. That's why they wanted to sell it. Why did you look at that and say, this is a great opportunity? Yeah, well, you know, Be Becky, we have been long believers in an all-of-the-above approach. And I think, uh, you know, maybe writ large, as you saw what's happened in Europe uh, in the last 18 months, everybody needs natural gas. There is no positive energy future from a sustainability perspective or affordability perspective without that gas. So we've already been in the gas utility business, and now this will create the largest platform for natural gas utilities in North America. So we're very excited. And they're in jurisdictions that do exactly opposite what you were saying. They have smart regulators and smart policymakers that realize that consumers want choice and they want sustainability. And this really is uh, just a great opportunity for us and our shareholders. And we'll continue to uh, be able to grow the dividend, grow our earnings on a go-forward basis. So very exciting. You think you got a, a better price because of all the concern about what regulators are doing? You think you were able to be opportunistic here? Well, I think there are several things. One, our size. So there aren't very many people that could uh, come across and buy in three individual states. Uh, with the financial wherewithal to do that. I think you're right, maybe a, a little bit of a contrarian play on, on some of this, not from our perspective, but so, from some other perspectives. And then I think you had a buyer that was motivated to focus on other things and largely on the electricity side of things, and that created opportunity for us uh, as well. So when you already run gas utilities, when you already run gas pipelines and liquids pipelines and renewables, it actually fits our portfolio extremely well. So you're not looking to diversify as some energy companies are doing at this point. You are figuring we're going to do what we know best and double down on it? Well, I, what I would say is we're an all the above approach, right? So we think the future of oil is through and out of North America. The future of natural gas is through North America and exports. But without a doubt, as you see population growth and you see sustainability and you see the need for that consumer choice, we're going to do all of those things. I think what you're seeing is some of the energy players are really just focusing on a single area. I think that's probably not the way to go. Again, I think that you'll see smart regulators, smart policymakers, and always smart consumers focusing on making sure that they can achieve sustainability goals as well as economic goals. You pointed out that this is in states where regulators are not considering some of the things that have been done in some states. I guess this is Ohio. Where else? Ohio, uh, North Carolina, and Utah. In fact, you know, despite some of the rhetoric you hear, over 30 states in the United States have actually banned the ban. In other words, they've passed legislation or regulation saying, no, you have to allow consumers the choice to be able to use natural gas. It's clean, it's abundant, and it's cheap. So, you know, again, despite some of the rhetoric, I think this is very much in line with what consumers want. And it'll uh, create a lot of value for us going forward. It'll take us till 25 to get it in the barn, and then uh, we'll drive forward. So I think it's a bit of a Super Bowl, if you will, of uh, utilities. You worry at all just on the idea of betting billions of dollars on the idea that you're going to have elections and legislators go your way. Yeah, I think, well, look, at, uh, I would say these are, these are red and purple states. I think it's more about what do consumers want. And I think politicians, you know, inevitably, they know that each consumer is a voter, and they know that sustainability is important for them, and natural gas is a really clean and critical element of the energy transition. But they know affordability, particularly in an environment where you've got inflation, an environment where energy costs are top of mind for people, natural gas creates a really great opportunity from that perspective. And as I said, it's really the front end. All of these assets will be used for things like as the hydrogen economy kicks in, as renewable natural gas kicks in from uh, uh, landfills and such. These assets are the exact same assets that will be utilized. We've been at Enbridge, we've been delivering gas to consumers for 175 years. You think of all the changes in the economy, in the energy over that time, and we continue to grow that business each and every year, which has allowed us to increase the dividend every year for about the last three decades.